The Crash Bandicoot games have become infamous for being difficult platformers, mainly due to Crash 4. As a kid, Crash 3 was the game I played the most out of the original three Crash Bandicoot games, but with it being the only game left for me to platinum out of the original trilogy, I was excited. Step 1 of this platinum trophy is to complete the story and collect all gems. Step 2 is to complete the time trials. Step 3 and the final step is the miscellaneous trophies in this game. However, while playing this game, I realized it's not the best out of the trilogy, and in this video, I'll show you why while earning the platinum trophy. This is the first level of the game, and of course it was kept simple as a cool fun medieval design and it's actually where we get our first trophy oh first trophy i didn't expect to get it so quickly discover a question mark bonus path the very next level in the game is an underwater level that i did not enjoy mainly due to the controls of the vehicle down there after that we have a level where we ride a tiger similar to crash 2's Bruh. polar bear levels And then right after that, we have a jet ski level. This is kind of nice because it's less linear than typical levels, but still not platforming, so it isn't my favorite. The water physics are not the best. Keep in mind, all of these are in Warp Room 1. We're introduced to the game with more gimmicky levels than actual platforming. And with that, it is time for our first boss, Tiny Tiger. Very easy boss here, and then right now, we just run in the corner and it's hilarious. Yep. This was a glitch in the original game where this wasn't intended. In this game, it's intended. They just throw cheese at you. Easiest boss fight in the game. Of course, first boss. I think we're gonna get a trophy here for beating the first boss. Moving on to Warp Room 2, we are introduced to the first racing level. Crash becomes a biker here and we get a clear gem for getting first place. We get another gem for breaking all the boxes. There is a time trial for these levels too. Basically, if you get first place, you pretty much have the gold relic. After that, we have another Coco Tiger level. There were some other platforming levels in this Warp Room, but I'm just showing you guys the gimmicky levels. Time for the iconic Dingo Dial. I remember loving this boss battle too. I, I feel like I just have to run and like avoid the fire and... For this boss, we need to avoid the fire and attack Dingo Dial once he shoots down his ice barriers. After that, we get another trophy and a very useful upgrade. There we go. We should be good now. I'm surprised I even died at all. There we go. <laughs> I just had to jump on him with the penguin. I had to. Oh, you get double jump pretty early in this game. Okay. The next boss and trophy is for defeating Engine, who has two phases. Oh, and we fight him in outer space too. Engine is no match for us. Mech wrecked again. Very nice. Soon after, we get a trophy for finding a bonus path after collecting a colored gem. Technically, this is a miscellaneous trophy. Also, I was streaming during this clip. See if I was going to take a while. Um, I don't really have a plan to play G. Oh, what's this? A cut above the rest. Discover a gem path after earning a gem color. Is that, That's my first colored gem path. And to finish up step one, it wouldn't be a Crash Bandicoot game without a boss fight against Cortex. Like, it just didn't interest me if that makes sense. Cortex Incarcerated. Defeat in Cortex. That's one third of the trophy. Now it's time for step two, completing all the time trials on gold or better. I also cleaned up any missed gems along the way, and we start off with accessing our first secret level and another trophy. To get the secret level, we had to hit this UFO sign in the level Road Crash. Wait, do I have to beat the bird to it? Oh, UFO crossing. Nice. Discover the secret exit in Road Crash. The time trials themselves really didn't take too much effort for most levels. A few levels took two or three tries, but that's it. Fun fact, I found out that originally Crash 1 and Crash 2 did not have time trials, so the levels there were not exactly designed for them. This is why Crash 3 is so easy compared to those two. All three still have nothing on this game though, just a reminder. 5, 106, 106, 106. I did say some levels took me a few tries, so here's one that I blundered. Bruh, I don't care. That's a lot. I'm like 10 seconds faster. That should be gold. Nice. And of course, it wasn't long before our next time trial related trophy. Yo, these levels, I, I love them when I first played them on PS2 and they just look amazing. Look amazing. Is there a problem? Granny, nice. This next clip is one of our iconic chase levels. And this time it's a dinosaur. This level looks fantastic and you'll see I almost missed the gem by running past it. Oh, 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 I would have been mad. I would have been mad if I missed. I almost jumped off the platform that I would have been mad. I would have actually been upset. <laughs> the first secret level was for hitting a UFO sign. And the second one is for being carried away by a dinosaur. This pterodactyl and jump on him. And there we go. Getting carried away. Covered the secret exit in dynamite. This one is cool because of this little guy right here. And he even gets us to our next trophy. Uh, yeah, Nike. Nike, man. Yeah. Twitch is it's just like watching streams on YouTube. It's free. 
Giving 102% earn the gems in a bonus level. Ice. I wasn't prepared for that trophy. Similar to Crash 2, we have a secret warp room we get to by elevator. Down here, we have some extra levels that still aren't too difficult, but this one's pretty cool. Here's another racing level, but this time it's nighttime and we race against UFOs. This was actually more difficult than the other racing levels, and it was my first platinum relic too. There is one level that was more difficult than the rest called Tomb Waiter. This level includes rising water that kills you if you fall in, so you'll see I jump on TNT and other boxes to stay above water. I jump on beetles, and I even waited for the water to drop down too a couple times. Using one of our abilities to stay in the air longer helped, and eventually we get triple masks to zoom past the remainder of the level. You can see quite a few water sections, so the triple mask is pretty much crucial to get our gold relic. Another gimmicky level I haven't shown off yet are the airplane levels. Here we need to shoot different objectives like other planes or blimps. Not difficult, but it just doesn't belong in a platforming game. All right, is that gold? I I, I don't want to do this again, so just give me gold. Like, it's not that it's hard, it's just not fun. Thank you. The very last time relic I needed for the trophy was on this secret Coco Jeski level. This one requires some precise pathing because you have to complete it in under 30 seconds. Where's the exit? Is that it over here? 27, 28, 29, we did it, <laughs> we did it, booyah, grandma, booyah, that was, that was cutting it close, the, the requirement was 30 seconds, so. and now the easiest step of all, okay, so to get 99 lives, I've been playing this level over and over here, this level is called Sphinxinator, and you just take the left path, once you get to the left path, there are four lives here, you just grab all of them, rinse and repeat over and over, so now we should get 99, get ourselves a trophy, a stitch in time saves 99. Okay, so in the same level, we can get our next trophy. There are several death-related trophies in Crash for whatever reason, kind of morbid, but it is what it is. And for this one, we have to let this mummy attack us and actually grab us for a trophy. There we go, keeping Crash under wraps. The description just says die. And again, in the same level, this level, Sphinxinator has a, quite a few trophies. Uh, for this one, we have to dodge these monkeys throwing rocks at us or whatever that is uh, for a minute. So I'll skip ahead and then we have to break the jars for a trophy. Okay, so they stopped attacking me, so now I can just break them normally and mo your moment of zen. Look at the monkey flying away. Up next, we need to take out five enemies using Coco's spin. So I just loaded up level one here for the easiest level in the game. We're going to go ahead and spin five enemies. Oh man, poor Go is going to be number five. For our trophy, category five. All right, still in the same level, I reloaded it as Crash. We need to take out our bazooka here and shoot this chicken five times. So, all right, this one here should be number five for our trophy. There we go. Trigger clicking good. I like that trophy name. Do five of them in a single level. Okay, so once you beat the game and pass 100%, there are fake crashes that start appearing in levels. So right here, we're in the same level again, level one, and we have to go find a fake crash, which should be, there should be one coming up right here. I see it on the right side over here. If you look closely, we have to shoot him for a trophy. There we go, accept no substitutes. He didn't even see us coming. All right, switching to a different medieval level here for our last death-related trophy. We actually have to let this wizard shoot us and we get ourselves a trophy, warts and all. Description still just says die. We are here for our final trophy of the game. It's related to the Sphinx right here. Before I shoot the Sphinx, which is what gives us a trophy, I do want to talk about this game and the last two games that I played, Crash 1 and Crash 2. The trilogy as a whole, I will say, masterful trilogy. I really liked it. Just playing these games that I played as a kid, now remastered in these great graphics was just a great time. I will say Crash 3's levels were the easiest of the three. Uh, they're also the most gimmicky, so they're actually my least favorite levels of the three. There are some platforming levels in this game that are a lot of fun. It's just Crash 1 was the most difficult and it's strictly platforming. Crash 2 had all these ice levels and uh, those are haunting me. They're still haunting me. I would say Crash 2 is my favorite, Crash 1 is second, and Crash 3 is third in terms of just the platinum. Um, but with that said, let's go ahead and get our trophy. If we go and shoot the Sphinx right here, I believe. Okay, that was wrong. So I have to wait for the reticle to turn red and shoot him right here. We get ourselves the riddle of the Sphinx, which is have your bazooka ready and then... The Invincible Crash Bandicoot. Collect all the Crash Bandicoot warped trophies.